Hello my angels and devils and all who may wander here. It is Amanda Christina and today I have the five craft supplies I will never ever buy again. Um, this was a hard list for me to put it into the top five but I don't know whether to go backwards or go forwards. Um, the first thing, the top of my list, the one thing I will it could be on clearance for five cents and I just go no thank you and walk straight by it. Mod Podge. I passionately hate that stuff. Um, I made some projects in my early crafting times, some really lovely projects, um, frisbees and all sorts of things, and they all melted together and ruined my projects because Mod Podge melts in Australian heat um, and made a sticky mess. I've found better success with gel mediums, multi-medium, although I'm not a huge fan of multi-medium now that I've discovered gel medium. Gel medium you tend to get more for your money. And it does exactly the same job as multi-medium. Just saying. <laughs> uh, sponge daubers. Those little ones that you stick your finger in. Uh, I have a habit of getting caught up in things that my sister thinks are awesome and then finding them not so awesome. So I need to not do that as much. Um, this was years ago, though. I'm better at knowing what I will and won't use. Um, I don't like them. They're wasteful you end up with like the little black container um, once the sponge bit's gone. I found the sponge bits really hard to work with. Did not like them at all. Would not recommend. Would not buy again. Um, Inca Gold. Now, I know a lot of people love these and unless the formula has changed in the last few years, do not buy them, especially if you live in Australia. My sister and I have tried everything from spritzing them with um, glycerin and water. I've had mine soaking in glycerin and water. Um, to stop them, try and stop the mold. I have done everything. I've done vinegar. I've done everything I can think of. I don't touch them. Like they say, you're not supposed to touch them. But apparently, it's just part of the formula that they go moldy. However, Prima have managed to make an art medium that doesn't go moldy. Just saying. Um, the rub and buff doesn't go moldy. So I cannot, re in all good conscience, recommend Viva Decor's Inca Golds. I have them. I will keep using them until they're gone. But I would never, ever, ever, ever buy them again. I wouldn't waste money on them. And I feel like they were a waste of money because they don't live up to their promise of, like, you, you should not have a product in your stash that goes moldy and the company just goes, oh, well, that's just the formulation. No, you don't release something until it's not going to go moldy because I've had to waste half jars or, you know, by the time I'm done, I'm probably going to have wasted half of the product because I couldn't use it because it was moldy. Um, yeah, kind of annoyed at that one. Uh, distress markers. I'm sorry, Tim Holtz. I love your products, but Tombow markers kick distress markers ass. They just, distress markers don't do as well as they're supposed to. And I find them harder to work with. I find Tombow gives me more room, more flexibility, and I find them easier to watercolor with and to get better effects with. So that is a personal preference. I know a lot of people love distress markers. I have a few I wouldn't buy more. I only bought a very limited collection of them. I sort of just bought one six pack and a couple of individual colours that I wanted, um, mostly because I was doing the creative chemistry courses and they come up in that. Um, I do that with some things like Distress Crayons as well. Like I'm not hugely sold on those, but I have a couple of sets. Um, and the last one, super, super cheap watercolours. Now, here's the thing. It can be very hit and miss. Sometimes you can find cheap watercolours that are awesome. My experience with cheap watercolours is that they are very chalky. And this is the hard set sets, like the palette sets, not the individual colours, um, is that they're very chalky. And I'm not a huge fan of chalky watercolours, like super chalky. It just doesn't, yeah, I, I've been, I'm trying to figure out how to, best use up or destroy the ones I have and turn that palette into an alcohol ink palette because it is about the same size and it's cheaper. <laughs> it was cheaper than an alcohol ink palette. So I may as well just, I don't know, I'll figure something out. Um, probably wasteful. I, I don't like being wasteful, but sometimes, you know, needs must. I'd rather be using the palette for something than forcing myself to use horrible watercolors I don't like. And I have a lot of things like Brusho and I have Winsor Newton Cotman's, like a big set of those. So I have a lot of good and I have Royal Langnickel tubes, which I'm not super fussed on, but I may pass those on to a friend because I'm not fussed on them. She might like, she might want to work with it, like just play with them. Um, 
I think when you're just starting out sometimes, um, I even have Daniel Smith ones, like just a little palette my sister made up for me. And I haven't tried those yet either. I've been pretty slack on the watercoloring lately. So that is my five craft supplies I will never buy again. Um, sometimes you need to invest a bit more. Sometimes it's not about price, as in the case with uh, Multimedium and Mod Podge. You can get a decent sized jar of Liquitex gel medium or Prima gel medium for a comparable price, or and they're usually bigger jars, or you can get a bigger jar. And so to me, it just doesn't seem worth it to spend the money on a brand that for me doesn't work as well. I don't, I don't hate multi-medium, don't get me wrong. I just find gel medium is better value for money and works better for me. I find multi-medium dries a little too fast for me. Um, anyway, so that is it. Let me know below what your five craft supplies you would never buy again are. And I will talk to you all soon, my angels and devils. Remember, as always, you are incredible, you are amazing, and you truly, truly do matter. Bye, all.